You know, when I gave my heart to the Lord, I would share my testimony too, but when I gave my heart to the Lord, I would read the story of Enoch. You know, it's a very short scripture. and said, Enoch walked with God and was no more. And I would just say, oh, I wish I would be like Enoch. Wouldn't that be so awesome? Because, you know, I was from a Muslim background, you know, in, in Muslim people are beautiful people, but they don't hear God. God doesn't talk to them, you know, like he talks to us. And you give your heart to the Lord and you said, man, this is so awesome. This Jesus is so real. He talks to me every day. I can feel him in my heart. Sometimes I have dreams. Sometimes in my dream I see his face. And I've seen his face in dream right here. You know, in that night I was studying his eyebrows, eyelashes. I don't want you to be jealous. I asked the Lord to give you even more. And, and he was so close. He was right here. You know, it's like right here. And almost our nose really touched. And I'm just looking at everything. And I was so mesmerized, you know. Then, you know, I came out of the dream and I, felt, I, I just realized that dream was not really a dream because when I was dreaming, it was more real than when I woke up if that makes sense. And my body was filled with love and it was so good. I wish I, I could stay in that thing, but huh, for some reason it doesn't stay that long. And, and I said, <laughs> I don't know what I'm preaching. I'm sharing my heart. I just said, I, wouldn't that be so good that I would be like Enoch? You know, man, that Enoch. I'm so jealous of that Enoch. He walked with God and the guy didn't die. God took him. And he was no more. You know, God took him. And he was a very close friend of God. You know, from a young age, I always wanted to be a close friend of God. You know, I, I just, I had this thing with the Lord that, hey, would you make me like Enoch? I know this is like 2000 and something. You don't do stuff like that anymore. In the Old Testament or in the old days, you used to do those things, you know. But, you know, I know you don't do those things anymore. Can, can I be please like Enoch? <laughs> Please, now I have you, I know you. <laughs> Can I, you know, this is after I gave my heart to the Lord, after I met Jesus. And, you know, sometimes the Lord gets, he's so awesome, he knows what he's doing. You know, sometimes he's quiet and him not saying things, it changes you. And, and if you don't even hear his voice, that will change you as well also. And, but, you know, I didn't hear his voice. I got kind of angry that, come on, you know, I want to be your friend. I heard you really are looking for friends. You know, your eyes just goes everywhere. <laughs> it's, it's like your eyes is going everywhere all the time to find somebody that you really want to be your friend. Come on, you know, I'm available here. And, you know. And you want to marry too. You know, I don't know how does that work, but hey, come on, you know, I'm available. And <laughs> you know, you have to be really real with God, right? He's very real. He cannot get more real. And he's waiting for us to get more real, right? God cannot say, Oh, okay, one day I will be real with people. He's very real. We have to get more real. You know, and the more real you get, the more you will see him. Anyway, long story short. Uh, one day I was so frustrated and I was, you know, you, you walk with the Lord and he, make, he wants to make you a soldier and he wants to, you know, teach you how to love and the honeymoon is over and, you know, and just I'm just kind of frustrated. Sometimes your finances is not good and sometimes it's like you feel kind of empty. And I said to him, uh, this is really not working here. You know, this is not really working out here. And I feel really empty. Nothing really makes sense. I cannot really get anything done. I can't do anything. I feel I'm, I'm like a failure. I'm, I'm still your ministers and we speak out. And people, they think our life is perfect. And we are full of faith and full of joy. And we are all, all the time is hallelujah. That's not the case. And, and... You know, look at even Apostle Paul and, and you know, just look at even Peter denying Jesus. I, I didn't get to that part yet. Hopefully I won't get. And, and I said, you know, this is not, this is really hard, man. This is really hard. I said, I feel kind of like, I feel I can't do anything as a man even. I can't get anything done. It's just like, I, I feel I don't have a lot of wisdom. It's like, 
I feel I cannot really make good decision. It's like, I feel so empty. I feel nothing. He said, "Uh uh-uh. Enoch walked with God, and he was no more. He said, now you're no more, and know that you're walking with me. Sometime in order for him to really fill us up, he empties us. You know, you said the Lord will, t- today was like all we need to know that he loves us. In order for, to, for him to really fill us with his love, sometime he will say, you know what? This is what you need. I'm going to empty you from everything. You thought you were really smart and you used to make all these smart decisions. But now I'm going to take that wisdom even away from you for a while, that you would be empty, that I may fill you. You know, today, this scripture came to me very strong this morning, that God will supply all your needs. Philippians 4. Okay, this is what we automatically think. God will supply all my need. What do I need? I need some car. I need some tire for my car. And the tire is really embarrassing. I got the flat tire coming to the church. I need some money to pay my house payment. These are all all my needs. God will supply them. Okay, as a parent, I'm going to share my testimony too, but I have 45 minutes. (laughs) As a a parent, you look at your children, and children look at you, and you say, you need, they say yes, to go brush your teeth. They said, come on, I don't need to. You say, no, you really need to brush your teeth. You really need that. Come on. You know, playing with video game, you really need to stop playing. You're just telling them their need. Oh, look at that sweet thing. You're telling them their need, right? They said, no, that's not what we need. Same thing with God. God said, this is what you need. He said, no, God, this is not what I need. He said, yeah, this is what you need. You need to sometimes be empty for a season. No, I don't need to be empty. I need some tire for my car. He said, I know that thing. But you really need to be empty. When we really walk with God, we really understand our needs. Not our want, but our our deep need. That will carry us for eternity, if that makes sense. God can do just like this and just we all would become wealthy and even wise like Solomon but look at the life of Solomon at the very end the guy was extremely depressed those days they didn't have depression pill or anything but the guy was so depressed and he wrote it in the Bible he said man everything is vanity I built this castle is vanity I I got married to I don't know 700 wives I don't know I think he had one of those dummies book too to know how to it's like that's vanity too I have all these things it's vanity you know and you know do you see where I'm going what do we really need Jesus and what Jesus grants is what we really need otherwise we go through life and just even as a spirit filled Christian that you just met Jesus for breakfast at, at lunch, no, nothing makes sense. You say, Jesus, I just had breakfast with you. Not really, but you know. It's like, you know, I, I just heard your voice this morning. I had this encounter last night. You know, people prayed for me. I got filled with so much of your Holy Spirit. But that was in the morning. But in the lunchtime, nothing makes sense anymore. My life even doesn't make sense anymore. It's like, then he would say, yes, I'm emptying you that I may fill you with myself. You're thinking too much. You know too many scriptures. You need to know me. You read so many books. Even my book. You need to get to know me. I always tell people, if you read my book, you're not going to get to know me. In order for you to get to know me, you have to come and spend time with me. Right? And... Anyway, that, that was just a short message about our need. And he will supply all your need. Brush your teeth. <laughs> I don't want to do it, Jesus. <laughs> I, I, I. I was this. 
I, I, I was a Shia Muslim, you know, growing up in Iran, and I all from a from the age that I was uh, almost twelve, I always wanted to be friend of God, to really become His friend. Nobody told me I could be friend of God. I just felt that I need to be friend with God, the Maker of heaven and earth. And my 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 passion was to walk with God. I didn't know walking with God. It's very different, and sometimes it gets really dangerous. And like walking with lion, you know, it's like it gets really dangerous. And uh, one day I told the Lord, I said, "Man, you're a troublemaker." <laughs> you know, it's like he always want to fight with demons and make travels. You know, look at Jesus wherever he went. It's like everybody they knew Jesus just was here. You know, and. If he lives in you, which he does, sometimes you say, "Man, I just I, may I just have some peace." The guy say, "I live in you. <laughs> I stir things." And again, he's like, "Get used to walking with God." But if we, when we have Him, which we have Him in our heart, but if we don't really become His friend and understand His ways, His ways will really hurt us because. His ways are higher than the right ways. Did you know that God's ways are not just higher than our ways? It's His ways are higher than the right ways. What we call right and wrong is way above it. That's why, you know, just say, I can't believe you allowed my son or my daughter to get sick. It's like, yeah, you can't believe it? Welcome to the family. (laughs) Sure, I can't believe it. (laughs) You know, it's like you get to this place that you just trust Him way above your understanding because you, you don't bring your understanding in anymore. And you just bring love inside and you know He loves you. And you say, God, what you're doing to my life, it doesn't really make sense. But now I know after spending some time with your heart that your heart is really good and you really love me. And now I know that if nothing makes sense in my life, the only thing that makes sense is you, and I can hold on to that. Sometimes I wake up and I say, Jesus, really nothing, nothing makes sense about my life. It's not that we have terrible life, we have wonderful life. But you know, sometimes you go through things. Everybody goes through things. Don't think that your pastor doesn't go through any things. He goes through a lot of stuff. You know, read, read, the, read the Bible. All the people that they walk with God. I say, nothing really makes sense, you know, just nothing. But then all of a sudden, I would say, oh, but you, you make sense. I'm not sure about anything, but I'm very sure about you. Because I met you. Because I know you, and I know you're amazing. You're not just good in my standard, you're God. Sometimes I fill myself with wisdom and revelation and knowledge and Bible and scripture. It, they take me two or three hours and then I'm in, empty. My gas tank is empty. Then I have to fill myself, go, you know, go to the gas station of Bible and fill another you know, scripture here. It takes me another 30 minutes and my, my, my whole thing just stops. Then I say, Jesus, this doesn't work also. You know, I used to think that if I just know all the scripture, I will be good. You know, did you know Jesus is all scripture combined together in one man, one person? Even, even you get heavenly revelation. Did you know that Jesus is all revelation combined together? Then we don't just hang out with revelation or books. We just hang out with the person of Jesus because he's all things together. Believe me, if you truly want to be his friend, he will take a lot of things away from you that he may give himself to you. That's, I don't know, it's a good news or bad news. It's, it's above both of them. It's not a really good news because your brain and your mind, your spirit say, no, that's not a good news. But it's not also in a bad news. You know, it's not a bad news. Then it's in another, another category. It's in God's category. If you really want to be his friend, sometimes he will take things away from you. He will say, this is what you need. I'm going to give you what you need. Really, I mean, it's not as scary, it's amazing. Then you walk around with peace. 
not just came to you through reading one Bible scripture, but came to you to read the one that we send the Bible, to read the one that who is the Prince of Peace. Does that make sense? I hope it does. No, I, 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 you should say, no, it doesn't make sense. Then I would say, that's wonderful. It shouldn't make sense. It should go inside you, in your heart, and add something to you. Add Jesus Christ to you, the person of Jesus, the real person of Jesus. You know, when I was 12 years old, I started to try to become a friend of God. I thought that if I could just read some Quran, do some study, and just be a good boy, you know, helping my mother, really, I mean it, washing dishes, you know, uh, doing things in the house. This is like 30-something years ago in Iran. Those days we had like two-channel TV, channel one, channel two, all Islamic channel. We didn't have like a vacuum cleaner. I didn't have real bed. We just sleep on the floor, and you had to just sweep the floor with those old-fashioned brooms and, you know, just helping my mother and thinking that God is going to really be pleased with me because I helped my mother. Then he said, now I can be his friend because he helped his mother. Really, that was my mentality. And going to mosque and praying five times a day and thinking that God is going to become your best friend because you just went and you bowed down to him and he needs some people to bow down to him and he's very insecure, you know. He needs just somebody to bow down to him and then he says, oh good, I can be friend of this person because, you know, he's bowing down to me and he's helping his mother and he's a good boy and if I tell him one day to go kill yourself for me and he will do it too. Wow! What an amazing slave I have over here. I didn't know. I just really, I didn't know his character. But there was something inside me that wanted to get close to him. I had no idea the journey I'm really going to walk with him. I had no idea. No idea. I couldn't even imagine in my wildest dream that the, the walk that you will have to walk with the person of Jesus. Look at Peter, the walk he walked. He's just fishing one day, then Jesus comes, and the stuff he went through, you know, one day, you know, walking on water, you know, you remember this story. Peter went through so much ups and downs, and then after three years, he got really attached to Jesus. Then Jesus says, I'm going to die. He said, we thought you were the Messiah. You are our God. Are you going to die on me? And then I will die for you. And <laughs> she says, sure, you will die for me. Then he goes, and he I'm just talking about, just imagine the ups and downs that Peter had to go. Then Peter said, I'm, go I'm going to die for you. He said, sure, you will die for me. And then Peter denies him, and not one time, not twice, three times. We call him Saint Peter, sure. <laughs> I hope he's not listening. <laughs> you know, because cloud of witness, they, they have this TV remote and they watch things. It's in the Bible, not the remote, but they're watching. It's like, yeah. I'm just, I hope that Peter has changed the channel to another churches. <laughs> Solomon changed the channel in the very beginning. And... and <laughs> But Jesus is watching. Right? You talk about Jesus. <laughs> In some churches, they put even this saint and that saint above Jesus, you know? Oh, Jesus. I even forgot what I was saying. Doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. What really matters is Jesus. You know, sometimes I think I will go back and find out what I was saying, but um, um, sometimes I say, oh, thank you. Wow, yeah, I need this one. Oh, I have my weapon. I have it. This is my weapon. Um, Sometimes I say, wouldn't that be so good that we go 
sometimes go to our church service and just say, this is how we're going to do it today. If it's an hour or hour and a half or two hours, all the congregation stand up or sit down and just be going to say Jesus for an hour and a half or two hours. Sometime, you know, just wouldn't that be so awesome? Because he said, I am the beginning, I'm the end, I'm the alpha and I'm the omega. I, 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 he said, I, I'm everything. He didn't just create everything. He's everything and he's all things. And just, just from the depth of today in the worship, we got to this part that three of our friends, they were dancing here and something sweet, sweet, I think you guys were saying. It was so simple. And you could feel the Holy Spirit resting in our simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is getting all the attention back to the person of Jesus Christ. Sometimes life gets too complicated. You know, you just bring it back to the simple message of the gospel, which is the person of Jesus Christ. You know, it's the person of Jesus, the sweetness that comes from the person of Jesus. That he's always the center of our attention, he's always the center of our life, he's the center of our heart. When you get to this valley of shadow of death that nothing makes sense, like David did, he said, but I know you, Jesus. I'm not going to be sad if I don't find any answer because I found you and you found me. But then later on he will give you the answer, he will bless you. He's an amazing brother. He's an amazing father. He's an amazing friend. He knows so many angels. So many angels listen to him. He has power. Principality. They all will become like a mouse when they see him. Even the big dude of them. You know, that, that even Paul had to wrestle. It's like all of those things will become so small when the person of Jesus walks in the, into the room. But he's not a Jesus that would just supply my need the way I want. It's like bringing him so low that he's just a supplier. Like going to a supplier here. You know, you go to a TV store. They supply TV and, you know, they, you give money, you buy TV. It's like Jesus is just a supplier of my need. That I am sick, you heal me. I'm depressed, you just give me joy. But he's way more than a supplier of our need. He gives us himself, the person of Jesus Christ. That's truly walking with Jesus and becoming no more. But when you're no more, where do you go? Do you stay no more? No, you go to see the Lord. Enoch walked with God and was no more. And then he was with him. He didn't stay no more. And I'm going back. When I was 12 years old, I had 45 minutes, which I went like over 30 minutes of it. And I didn't still share my testimony. But I told you about Jesus. Anyway, again, I will try to get this thing out. Oh, I tried to do everything to please Allah, and I did it for so many years. I started when I was 12, and I almost ended my relationship, which I didn't have relationship, it was work relationship, when I was 20-something years old. I went through a very tough time emotionally and spiritually. It was like I got to the place that I was bankrupt spiritually, because I thought that for so many years, I poured my life into Allah and I just really listened to what he wanted me to do, which it wasn't through him talking, it was through Quran and the te Islamic teaching. Nothing happened. My father had a big supermarket in town and I remember standing in the supermarket, I said, Allah, I knew this is a bad conversation. This is not going to be really pretty and he's going to send me to hell. Really, I thought. I said, Allah, I don't, you know, this relationship between me and you, it doesn't work anymore. I'm not going to pray to you five times a day anymore. I am done. It's done. And I know when I come to judgment that you're going to kick me to hell. Go ahead and do it. But before you do that, really, I had this conversation. I said, before you do that, I'm going to look you in the eyes and say, you owe me. Because I gave you my life. And I want to be your friend. You didn't want any friend. And you really broke my heart. 
And really, when I finished that conversation, I really thought that, okay, I'm going to go to hell. Let's just go and do stuff. And then he say, I say, now that I'm going to go to hell, what do I do? I said, hey, let's go to the United States. <laughs> really, I mean it. <laughs> let's visit you as before I visit hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, St. <Saint> Paul. <laughs> we love Paul, but it's Jesus. I'm so thankful for the relationship that Apostle Paul had with Jesus that we could read in the Bible and pass him. <laughs> you better pass him. Really. It's his desire for us to pass him. When I got saved, I was the first one. <laughs> I will go back to the 12-year-old. But no, this, one, this time I'm going to go back. Now I'm 30 when I had that conversation. When I, when I got saved, the Lord told me my brother is going to get saved. I was the first one in our family. Very first one. The first one in our family who got saved as a Muslim. And my brother, he wasn't even a religious Muslim. I was, and he's younger. I'm, I'm old, older, you know. Older brother gets a bigger blessing. And then, <laughs> sure. And then the Lord tells me, when he gets saved, he's going to pass you. Really, he prepared my heart. I said, wonderful. And in some area, my brother really passed me in relationship with God. And then we have a sister, younger sister. The Lord said, when she comes, she's going to pass both of you. I said, wonderful. But my relationship is with Jesus. My brother has a very strong relationship with Father. And my sister, the Lord told me, is going to have a very strong relationship with Holy Spirit. Like Father, Son, Holy Spirit. You should get my brother to talk about Father. He can't stop crying. And, and my sister is in, in that process of getting to know the person of Holy Spirit. Okay, now I'm 30 years old. I really said this strong desire came and, and said to me, it's like in my heart, said, you go to U.S. and become a, maybe you're going to laugh, ready? To become an actor or a model, you know? <laughs> Why are you laughing? You mean I couldn't do it? <laughs> uh, and I said, I said, hey, let's, I'm, I'm from a small town in, in you know, I Iran. And, you know, I didn't know English. I didn't speak English. I, you know, it's a very small town I grew up in that country. And as a Muslim boy, you know, kind of a good boy, didn't really know anything that much. And I pack my stuff, I go to Cyprus, it's another country, close country to Iran, to get my visa to go to America. Because I'm done with God, I'm going to go to America and to do something new with my life. And my relationship with God is done, I don't want to be religious anymore, it's finished. I want to just do, start my life new. We watched some American movie. I thought Hollywood is waiting for me at the airport. Hallelujah, it's going to be so good. I speak some Farsi. Maybe they need to, you know, some, someone to play a terrorist or something. Then they could pick me. <laughs> you know, Bin Laden was 6'7". Seven. I'm 6'7", seven too, you know. But the movie thing never happened. And <laughs> Jesus, I need to... I need to uh, be holy again. I'm sorry. I would just laugh too much. You can't laugh in the church. And <laughs> why are you guys are laughing? <laughs> Stop that now. And one of the competition in heaven is laughter. I tell you later. Maybe next year, you need to invite me. I tell you about those laughter competition in heaven, and which my brother told me. And I'm not making you confused. I'm just getting you ready for Jesus. Right? Don't need to understand what I'm saying. Just receive it. Right? Just relax in the person of Jesus Christ and know that he knows all your needs and he's going to supply all of them. But he will prioritize our needs. And he knows how to do it because he's been God for so long. The guy is very smart. Sometimes I say, if he sends his resume, is very impressive. He can get job any places. But he will fire them all. But anyway. It's like, I just, get, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, take a deep breath. I went to Cyprus to get my visa because, you know, I'm from Iran. And America, they don't give visa to Iranian. It's like, why do you want to go to America? Uh, I have some, you know. Anyway, uh, look inside my jacket. <laughs> Very pretty jacket I have, but it's so big. Uh, <laughs> boo. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> I promise you, I never sh- prepare any message. And this morning when I sat there, I said, Lord, please give me something to share. And, oh, Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay, take a deep breath. And uh, I, I went to Cyprus um, knowing that, you know, it's almost impossible to get visa. I'm 30 years old. I don't, ha- I just had my high school diploma and I, you know, I don't, I'm not really educated person to tell the em- uh, embassy that I want to go to U.S. to do this or to study. I have a high school diploma and my grade, they were really low. Uh, and because, you know, all of my life I helped my father in the supermarket and didn't really get the chance to study and I was just really trying to study God and that didn't work out. And I'm like, I'm like no more. Because in that age, in that culture, by the time you're 30, you're married. I'm kind of like, I'm like miserable. I'm no more. I don't have any education. I don't have any money. All my cousins, they got married. They all settled down. They all went to college and university. Now they're married and with job. And I feel that I'm so empty. Nothing makes sense in my life. Watch some Hollywood movie. Just go to America, become an actor. It's like, come on. But the Lord was working. The whole time, he saw me when I was 12, and he said, I'm going to give you what you need. And in that, that time, when I was 30, I was extremely empty. Empty of everything. Empty of idea, empty of, you know, that, that was a kind of a stupid idea. That, you know, just go to, really, to you is become an actor, you know. And, but the Lord used my acting teacher to lead me to the Lord. Isn't that amazing? i tell you later. And... And I, I went to, the, to, to Cyprus, and I went to this small hotel close to the embassy, and I'm just, you know, trying to get visa, and I didn't have anything to do that day, and I don't speak English. I, this is a foreign country for me. I've never been in a foreign country before. I'm confused. I, I don't go outside the hotel also. And the embassy was very close to the hotel. I'm walking around the lobby of the hotel, and I find this book. It says... Anjil Sharif means Holy Bible in Farsi language. And I said, nah, I'm not interested in religion anymore. But something pulled me toward that book. I asked the uh, clerk, I said, can I have this book? Can I read it? He got so happy. He signed the book. He gave it to me. He said, it's yours. I said, it really touched me. I said, you're giving me this book? He said, yes, it's yours. Remember, we used to think that Bible was corrupted. We've been taught from a young age. And I'm, in my eyes, I'm, I'm just getting this kind of corrupted book and being very careful. It's very corrupted. And, and taking it to my room, I didn't have anything to do. I sat on the floor. I opened the Bible, and I'm starting to read the Bible. For the first time, my eyes got touched in the Bible. And it's the story of this sweet Jesus prophet that we heard. You know, in Islam, you heard about Jesus, but he never died, you know. Muslim believe. He never was crucified. One of his students or disciple, they were crucified, not him. And I take the Bible and I open it, and as I'm reading, my eyes get touched to the name of Jesus. It said, Jesus Christ is Esau Masih. And when my eyes got touched to the name, the ink and the name literally jumped out of the book. This is not a vision, I see it. It's like, you know, you see this name here, literally jumps out of the book. I'm sitting on the floor, goes to the ceiling, and then, bam, lands into the book. The Lord didn't allow me to get excited and say, this is a miracle. It was like, okay. And I kept reading. And again, it's like, you see this happen every single day. And 
And the second time, when I, my eyes got touched to the word Jesus, the Esau Masih literally jumps out of the book and goes, I can watch it. It goes like this, and I'm just looking at it, and goes to the ceiling, and then comes back and bam, lands into the book. That happened three or four times. The last time when I looked up, I saw a man standing in my room. You know, the ceiling expanded, and I saw him, and in, immediately I knew this is Jesus. This is Esau Masih, the prophet. I called him the prophet, and he didn't get his feeling hurt. Why did you call me prophet? I'm the son of God. And he didn't get his feeling hurt, and he just, I, I said, oh, that's prophet Jesus. Peygumbar, Esau Masih, Peygumbar, you know, prophet. And he looked at me, I looked at him, and some may say, how did you know it was Jesus? I saw his picture on Facebook. No, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, he doesn't have Facebook. Because, because he, he, his face is a book. Because he's, anyway, we can go, we can, we can go to those things for eternity. And, and, and uh, because he created me, my body knew him. But I didn't know. It's like, oh, this is it's like immediately I knew it was him. He looked down and he said, I will help you to go to United States. That's what he said in my own language. Did you know he speaks a lot of languages? He has a lot of time in heaven to study those things. <laughs> but his original language is Afrikaans. No, it's Chinese. <laughs> sure. Chinese will say, no, God speaks Chinese. <laughs> he speaks all languages. I have to get this thing done. Okay. And, and, oh, I said to myself, can I pray to him? He's, he's a prophet to Christian. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Muslim. Can I pray to him? I asked myself, why? He's waiting. Really, I mean it. Then I said to myself, I got really angry. I looked up. I said, Jesus, all other prophets, they never, ever answered any of my pro um, um, problem or they never helped me. If you can, please do. I go to the embassy next day. They give me my visa. They issue my, my visa. And they give me my passport back in the same day. Right? And I walk outside the embassy. I said, oh, Allah, thank you so much. It looked like after so many years, you're doing something. It's like I thought Muhammad was busy. And Jesus, Allah said, oh, another prophet. Hey, Jesus, can you go and help? You know, other prophets are busy. Really, in my mind, he was a prophet. And Allah really helped me. I said, whoa, finally, after many years of crying and grieving, hi, I've been looking this way. I'm so sorry. And, and I said, forget about these people. And <laughs> joking. The pastor is sitting here. I have to stand here. <laughs> and, and I said, uh, it's really happening. I really got so much courage in my heart. I said, it's happening. I'm going to be an actor. And, and I went to U.S. You know, I packed my stuff. I went back to my country, got my stuff, said bye, went to U.S. I started to read the Bible. Bible made me very angry because Bible said Jesus is the Son of God. That was against my belief. I said, ooh, ooh. Son of God. God doesn't have son. And then I said to myself, read the book. It's okay. Jesus helped you. Read the book. I read the book the second time. It said, it really pushed it. It said, it's really, he, the guy is everything. He created everything. I said, oh my God, this book been really corrupted. And that, <laughs> really. And the third night I read the book and it was the book of John. And it said, he's God also. I said, that's it. <laughs> I got the book really. I got the book like that and I just threw it to the corner of the wall. I really wanted to hurt the book physically. I mean it. And I said, this is not happening. Jesus didn't show up. He didn't do anything. He didn't send any SMS or email. It was done. Really, it was just done. And he said, okay, you need another three years. I'm going to grant you what you need. Three more years in America. I was so miserable. I, again, I was at the end of myself. I went to some acting school and a modeling school. My teacher was a spirit-filled Christian. And she started to talk to me about the person of Jesus Christ. I prayed this prayer, long story short, one day with one of our friends. I said, man, I was so angry that day. I'm crying so hard. I don't want to talk about God. I don't want to talk about 
devil anymore. They're telling me it's Satan. I said, Satan is not my problem. God created Satan. Why did he create Satan? And I am going berserk and I'm just crying so hard. It's all his fault that he created Satan. He doesn't want to be my friend. Nothing ever makes sense. Again, I'm getting in that place of nothing again makes sense. Satan doesn't make sense. God doesn't make sense. Witch doctor doesn't make sense. Political party doesn't make sense. The whole world doesn't make sense. World War I doesn't make sense. World War II doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense. Economy doesn't make sense. I don't make sense. Bible doesn't make sense either. It's like, nothing makes sense. What do I do? I'm so empty. Then Jesus said, hello. Hi. How are you? Like children crying and, you know, their nose is running and they're even eating their nose. The boogers sometimes. He said, Hi, hi, how are you? Come here, come, come. You pick them up, you wash their face, and you hold them here. He said, you're not an orphan anymore. You're not an orphan. You're mine. I've always been your father. I've always been with you. I cried for you when you cried. Always was there for you. I will be here for you. You're not an orphan. I love you. And then you can feel that embrace. It's not a promise anymore. It's embrace. You can feel it. Like, ooh, it's not a biblical promise anymore. That is feels so far. It's an embrace. The Bible even promises. I got to that place. That night I was like, like that baby, crying so hard. And I prayed this prayer. I said, Jesus, I don't believe you are the Son of God. But if you are, I give you my heart. I told him the truth. I couldn't lie to him. He is the truth. You cannot offend him if you tell him the truth. I said, I don't believe you are the son of God. He said, yeah, you are telling me the truth that you don't believe. You said it right. But if you are, I give you my heart. Then I said, Jesus, I don't believe your blood has any power to forgive my sin. But if there is any forgiveness through your blood, I receive it. Wash all my sins away. And then I said, Jesus, if you can build a relationship between my heart and the heart of God that you claim he is your father, I give you full permission from this moment on to do anything you want to do with my life. Full permission you have. Remember, in talking to Muslims, we don't have to really try so hard to explain gospel. Give them Jesus. You know, when I come to Muslim, I, I, you know, I don't try to convince them. I'm not a businessman. I don't want them to just join the club. I don't beg them to do this. I say, man, do you want to be a friend of God? Yes or no? If, if it was possible for you to personally become a friend of God, would you want it? They think they said yes. Okay. If it was possible for God Almighty right now to wash all your sins away, would you want it or not? If it was possible, yes. If Jesus could wash all your sins away right now and bring God into your heart, do you want it or not? Yes. And then I say, search your heart and really see if you really want God to live in your heart because it's going to be a dangerous thing. Do you want it? Yes. Pray this prayer. Jesus, I don't believe you are the Son of God, but if you are, I give you this one. I give it to you. I give it to you. I give this to you. Empty it, fill it, rip it apart, heal it, do surgery, spend it, make it big, make it small, play soccer game with it, do whatever you want. Play rugby with my heart, do anything you want. It's yours. It's yours then you take good care of this one. It's not mine anymore. It's yours. My children are yours. Our congregation is yours. My house payment is yours too. (laughs) (laughs) Everything is yours. Take care of them. He says, okay, I will take care of you first here. And I went to a church. They invited me to a church. I saw Jesus is standing behind that pastor and he's looking at me like this. Really, I just saw him. He's standing behind the pastor and he's looking at me and I'm, I'm just saying, who is that? You know, is it my, there's a voice inside me said, it's Jesus. And I'm like laughing. <laughs> sure, I just see some stuff here, you know. And when I said that Jesus t- truly walked here on the stage and he tripped, he didn't. He kept walking. <laughs> 
You may say, he walks on water. We never heard that it's not scriptural, he walks on air. But he walked and he just went toward me and he entered my body. And I saw him, bam, touched my heart and the fire was everywhere. Second encounter I had with Jesus, our time is running. But second encounter I had with Jesus, he came and he really emptied inside me. I saw this dark tornado inside me. I didn't know demon exists. I didn't know deliverance. I went through intense deliverance. It was very short, like 10 seconds. Thank you, Jesus. And I was screaming like a beast, really. And they recorded the whole thing too, the church. And I still have the tape. And then when the, that dark spirit left, I looked up in my eyes closed I saw Jesus standing in the right side of a throne I didn't see anybody sitting on it those days I couldn't see the Father God and Jesus standing and he poured his spirit all over me the moment that the spirit touched me every single inch of my body was proclaiming he's the son of God and I knew who he was in that very moment it was January 21st 2000 then he granted my wish of walking with his father and walking with him and knowing Holy Spirit and I thought life would be easy but I didn't know life would be with me it would not be easy but I will carry life and life would carry me and it's going to be in that that like 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 an agony of carrying life an agony of like giving birth you you lady you think you just give birth we really give birth too believe me like giving birth you know to to oh giving birth to like, like, like the, the, this agony that later on would just become a promise for people. Anyway, it's a real, real, real relationship with God. It's like sometimes it gets so bloody, sometimes it gets so dangerous, but the whole time you're in it, it's so real. And then most of the time you say, man, it doesn't make sense anymore, but thank you, God, that you are the only one that makes sense. I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to keep going. It's like church split doesn't make sense, but you make sense. Perhaps pastor falling doesn't make sense. David fell too, but you make sense. My friend rejecting me doesn't make sense, but you make sense. Nothing makes sense, but you make sense. When I turn the TV, nothing makes sense, but you make some Some programs are good, but most of them, they don't make sense, but you make sense. When I wake up, I breathe you in, and I breathe you out, and you are my Lord. Amen. Cameron, thank you so much, and you can just hear, we just so enjoy just God in you and you being the vessel that you are.